Good morning, everyone. It's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Live, and we're going to paint some little fall, a little fall scene this morning. You can see in the background here, it's one um, I've painted a bunch of times. But um, welcome. So I'm here on my Craft Around the Clock segment this morning, as well as my Tinker's Cart art page. So I know some of you are signing in from both places. So welcome and thanks for joining me on this early morning. Hi, Tarita, thanks for watching. It's great to see you all pop in. Um, it's early here for me, it's 8.30 and I'm in Massachusetts. I know you see me come from Maine a lot, but um, the season's changing, it's fall, so I'm gonna be home now. So I'm coming to, to you from Central Mass where the colors have just popped. Good morning, Carrie from Kentucky. The, and Michelle, thank you guys for watching. Um, I really appreciate it. And, and the trees here are gorgeous. I don't know how many of you up here in the Northeast, but uh, overnight these trees have popped. So good morning, Anne. Thank you guys all for popping in. Please say hello and um, let me know where you're watching from because that's always fascinating to me. I'm always talking about fall, you know what the weather is here and the time and everything. And I know you guys are from all over the place. And I also have you here on my page. So as we go, I encourage you to ask any kind of questions you want. Hey, Gloria, thanks for watching. I know I've been painting lots of pumpkins and Halloween lately, and that's so fun. But I'm going to paint a little fall scene. I've done this painting quite a bit at my paint nights. Um, I've done it with my membership. I have an art membership online. Hey, Samantha from Texas. Again, I know I have a lot of people viewing from Texas and I've not been there yet, so that's on my bucket list. Um, I have to get down there pretty soon. Good morning, Tracy. Hi, how are you today? It's, um, it's gonna be a beautiful day here in New England. And Jackie, thank you for watching. So what I thought I would do is um, take you through a, a quick fall landscape. Um, we're not going to do it as detailed as this one, but I have another one with the palm, uh, palm trees. See, I've got um, tropical in my mind. Birch trees, which uh, we find in New England here a lot. I love painting birch trees. They're very quick and very easy. And um, hi, Jean. Thanks for watching. And so we're going to just do a quick little version on this little wooden cover for this little glass dish. I don't know if you saw when I was sharing all my Target finds, you know that little section of Target you walk into and they have all those cool little things for like three and five dollars. This was five dollars. I originally was gonna paint a pumpkin on it, but we've been doing lots of pumpkins and things lately. I thought a little fall scene will carry us right through the season and um, I think it'll fit nicely on this little wooden cover. And surprisingly, for, for an inexpensive little box, this is pretty smooth. So all I've done so far this morning is put a little quick coat of polyurethane, a water-based poly on here. What that does on the wood is it brings up the burr a little bit so that if you give it a little sand now, it will be nice and smooth and it would have a great surface to paint on. So I've put the poly on, let it dry, and I'm just sanding it with a little sanding block. I go with the grain of the wood. If you have a piece that's really burry and uh, needs a lot more um, poly, you just put a thin coat on each time, let it dry and sand it down and you'll get a nice surface. Hey Carol, good afternoon, you're in the UK. I have family in Manchester, so I do travel over that way a little bit. Um, and uh, Donna, thank you guys for watching. So what I'm gonna do is simply just put a little sketch on to get started. Really just a horizon line and where the water, this little stream, it's like just a little fall scene. And I'm just going to divide the horizon line here Usually when I'm doing a landscape, I like to go a little below center or a little above center for um, the horizon line. You usually don't want it smack dab in the middle. I have a little stream coming out here and I simply just sketch kind of a little zigzag. The stream, I always like to have it go off in the back. It's hardly even there. And as you come out, you're just gonna get a little wider just for the perspective. It's pretty simple. It's just a little sketch. That's all I'm gonna start with on this little piece. And when I paint landscapes, I tend to go from the background to the foreground. And that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna paint the sky first. Let me get you guys set up on my page right here. And if you have any questions, just put them in there. Good morning, Charlotte's watching and Carol. Thank you guys all for popping in. I know it's early, but let's just do a little painting because what I want you guys to know is you don't have to have a big chunk of time. You don't have to have all of the right materials. You don't have to have all of the excuses that we all use to sit down and start painting because we all wanna paint. We all wanna incorporate art in our lives. It's so good for us. So here's to show you in, in the 45 minutes, we can sit down, pop in and start a painting um, 
and you can incorporate that just a little corner somewhere in your house to put a little desk or a corner of the table and i just want you guys to uh bring have joy in your life with through art like i do so uh thank you hey patty thank you guys hey um we're all back home now and julia thanks for watching little wooden top basically a horizon line and a little bit where the stream is I've got two acrylic colors out here. I'm using just my craft paints this morning, just the craft acrylics. I also like the two Liquitex or Golden, but we're gonna just use what I have right here handy because we just wanna paint, right? Okay, Donna, thanks for watching. I'm trying to watch you guys, and I'm gonna to try to answer questions, but know that I always come back to the replay and answer questions um, as well later. So I've just got a few colors out. I've got black and white. I've got a blue for the sky. And then I just took out whatever shades of fall colors I, I like. I have a few greens. I have some golds and yellows and orange and a burnt sienna, like a brown, uh, red brown. Again, just buy, I mean, take out whatever you have. Don't have to run out and buy things. And I want you to see my palette, so maybe I can do this. I'm just taking a little bit of blue into my white, and I'm just going to get that sky in to start. So we're just going to get a blue sky in there. This is a real simple project. It's a little tiny cover I don't know maybe six inches around so we're not going to worry too much about a lot of detail and I just kind of want to show you how quick you can get a cute little uh, a nice little landscape scene on here I'm just going into my a little bit of blue into my white I'm not mixing up a blue color to start with I'd rather have the natural look of the colors mixing on the fly on the palette if you will and I would go around the edge and finish that off as well And the paint, like I said, is a little rough, but this was pretty smooth for a little $5 uh, Dollar Tree find. And you can get it as smooth as you need to, just putting the polyurethane on as a base. And when I put this coat of paint on here, that's gonna act as a little acrylic base too. And I can sand that if I find that the paint's a little thick and hard to work with. So can you see when I'm putting on this blue and white, I have some areas that are a little lighter and some areas a little darker. That looks more natural to me. I work a little fast because I want to be able to blend wet and wet a lot of times when I'm painting my landscapes. So that's why I go a little quicker. This paint is still still wet, still a little tacky. So now's the time I can just dry off the brush on the paper towel. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm trying to get everything here so you can see. And pick up just some white, maybe just with the corner of my brush, just a little bit. And because this is wet, I could go right on here and put it on maybe a little cloud. Oops, there you go. Because it's wet and wet, it pretty much it almost blends itself. So I can go back with, and, and in between, I'm always drying my brush off. When I put my color on and I want to finesse it or blend it or just soften it, I dry the brush off. So what I'm working with is kind of a dry brush that's just going to soften. So I'm going to just soften that cloud if I think it needs to. Sometimes I could just leave it. I could leave it a little bolder too. I can take a little bit of white on just the very tip in the corner of my brush and up towards the top of the cloud, I can make it a little bit brighter. I like to have my clouds a little brighter on the top and the bottom fade off to nothing. And it's as simple as that to get a cloud, especially on a tiny project like this. You can go ahead and put in, if you wanted just a little bit lighter area, say it's just a wisp of a cloud in the background, just throw on some white, Dry off your brush, get that soft brush, and you can just soften it and blend it in. You can get as harsh a cloud or as soft and wispy. Sometimes you could just put in little light areas in the back. Now that's not bad for a little uh, sky painted in minutes, right? So, um, so see how easy and quick it can be when you don't think too much about it and don't fuss and try to get it perfect. Just go in and have fun with it. Hey, Margaret, thanks for watching. And like I said, I'm going to try to keep an eye on here. Um, oh, Patty, yes. The pa didn't, it, didn't it just start popping? The, the foliage here is, is amazing. I'll, I'll try to get some pictures and post for you guys. Now, since I have the blue on my brush, I have this little stream I'm putting in back here. I might just go ahead in. It's a pretty wide brush. I might uh, be better off with a thinner one, a, a smaller square, or a round. Um, but I do just go in the back there, and I just sort of zigzag and finish it up a little thicker. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to go with my little smaller square brush, though, and just fill that in a little bit. 
again, the wood is a little bit, um, it absorbs the paint a little quicker than um, sometimes when we're painting on canvas or a really slick surface. Good morning, Barbara. How are you? Barbara, um, I can't remember if I saw a message and I, res and I responded. I know you asked me for something and uh, there's so many messages sometimes coming in different areas. I meant to go back and look. So if there was something you're waiting, a tracer or something you're waiting on for me or direct or where to find something it might be, just send me a direct message. Direct messages usually are a little bit better. I can, uh, if it's a message on a comment, sometimes I, I, I try not to miss anything, but just feel free to always email me, you guys, or uh, the texting number is in the description. You can text me anytime. And uh, if I don't respond to something, just 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 contact me again. So I, I don't mind at all. I just wanna make sure I get everybody's uh, messages and things. So I basically filled in that little stream with blue. How I want to shade that, because shading and highlighting are what makes objects come alive, what gives them form. And I'm going to just take and put it a little darker on the edges of that stream. So to do that, I'm going to just take my blue, my dark blue. I'm going to add the tiniest bit of black to it. Just making it a little darker, more navy, more Prussian blue. And what I want to do is just on the edge of the stream, get that little dark shadow in there. Paint's still wet, so I'm going to be able to blend it. I'm not worried about that. I'm going to dry my brush off a little bit. I just want to have kind of a chisel edge on that square brush along the edge. Now, of course, it looks like a line of dark. Even though it's wet and wet, it blends a little bit. But just dry off your brush, and you're just going to use that little brush to soften the edges. So I'm going to just soften one side first. I didn't lose it completely, but it's softer. I'm drawing the brush off to any paint that I'm picking up when I'm doing this. Hey, Peggy, thanks for watching. And this. And now to get it to look more like water, I'm gonna take some white on my brush and I'm gonna go back and forth. Now I don't wanna, these are gonna be like little highlights in the water. If you're doing an ocean or a pond, just let me go put those little highlights that go vertically, I mean, <laughs> horizontally back and forth. You might wanna follow the shape of the stream, but don't do that, just go from side to side straight on that vert on that horizontal and I'm just with the chisel edge of my flat you could use a round if that's more comfortable for you I'm not real particular about use this brush use that color um, I'm just showing you the techniques because honestly if you use colors that you like different colors tools that you like it's gonna come out a little different and that's what we want we want all your paintings to come out a little different we don't want to all be copying mine we don't want to say oh it's not right it doesn't look like yours I could paint this five times, it's never gonna look the same. So we're not striving to get it to look like anybody's. We're trying to get just something, we're having fun and we wanna get it to look like something that we like. I've got a little bit of that uh, streaks back and forth. I'm gonna take a little blue. It's Some of the, the white is very highlighted, which is fine. And some, I wanna just dull down a little bit. So a couple little shades of blue going back and forth there, just to get that indication that it's water. Okay, so we've, had blue out, so let's just finish with the blue now. I'm gonna rinse off my brush. And because it's a fall scene, I wanted to incorporate some oranges, but to set that off, I also put a little green in because the green's still here. It might not all be, uh, you know, a, a goldy, orangey landscape. So the trees in the background, I've got a little line of trees back there, and then I'm going to just put some little different land masses in here. And to make it interesting, I'm going to make it some orange and then some green. It's a little stripey, it is a little stripey, but it makes it a little interesting to look at. It's uh, They're all kind of leading into the little stream, which is your center of interest. So let's go ahead and just put that tree line in the back here and the little sections that we want to be green here. And I'm gonna start dark, because a lot of times I work dark to light. So I'm gonna start dark, which is that dark, dark green I have. Now it might need just the teeniest touch of black. Sometimes the acrylic colors are just not, doesn't have as much pigment as we like, and I just wanna get it really dark to begin. So I'm getting a little bit of, maybe even a little blue in there, just to deepen that green up, as dark as it is to start. Along the whole tree line, I'm just gonna put a dark strip of green, dark green. And I'm gonna get it lighter as it goes to the top of those trees. And I'm just gonna lay those colors in now. Then I'll take my dry brush and sort of blend them. They're very far in the background. So it's not like we have to be painting each individual tree. So now I'm gonna just take a middle shade of green. And can you notice I'm just putting it in there. I wanna have different heights. 
Can you see I'm not really touching the dark green yet? I'm sort of putting it in. My brush may accidentally hit that dark green, but I'm trying to leave a little buffer between. It's a little buffer between so that I'll, now I can use a clean, uh, a dry brush to blend. So I'm drying off my, my paintbrush. And I'm going to softly go. And I'm, I almost have my flat brush halfway on the light green and halfway on the dark. And can you see I'm just sort of smudging that? And this is something you have to kind of do when the paint's wet. That's why I am working a little fast. I'm trying to explain what I'm doing too, but but I'm going to try to catch that while, while it is wet. Drying off my brush, because I want it to be even lighter on the tippy top. I've got like a, kind of like a lime green. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go right across the top there. And I'm making it different heights and not perfectly straight across to make it more interesting. We wouldn't want a, a tree line that's just flat. So I've done the same thing, dry off my brush, and then just soften it into that green. So that's all we need for the, for the background. That's all we need back there. If it looks like it's too straight of a line, you can just take that light and bring it down into that in a few places. Now, if, you, if you're new and you, and you haven't done much of this sort of blending, there's no worries because if the paint dried, if you put your little dark strip on there and that dried by the time you got to blending it, it's not a problem. Just take a l quick little swipe of the dark over there. Because you have one coat on, it's going to cover quick, dry off your brush, and then go into it. So there's, so there's no way. Acrylics are great because you can take something off if you don't like it. You can paint over it. So this, if you don't blend it fast enough, just simply paint over it. You're going to see me blend these other little grass sections the same exact way. And um, you know I always leave these little recordings up so you can go and rewatch it, stop and start it, work at your own pace, which is kind of great. So I'm going to now, since I have green on my brush, let's just do the two little sections of green down here. Same way. I've got that dark green. I've added a tiny bit of black and blue to it just to deepen it. And we're going to have, say, this little section right here. This little, just this little bump is going to be green. So I'm going to do that right out to the water. I'm going to work on two sections at a time. Work on one if you're if you're new at this and just blend. But I want to get them, since I have green on my brush, I might as well do those two sections. I'm putting the dark in. Dry off my brush. I don't wash it off with water. I'm just drying it on the paper towel. Because it's a dry brushing technique, I don't want really water in my brush. Hey, good morning, Cindy and Margaret. Thanks for watching. I'm going to take that middle shade of green. It's going to be filled in a little bit higher because it's a little bit of land coming in towards the stream. And you can see I'm going very close to the green, but not too close so that I mix. I don't want to mix too much of that dark in just yet. I want to just get the light green there. If I started mixing the dark green in, I might lose that nice middle shade of green. And now it's where I'm drying my brush off again. And I'm gonna blend those two together. Just, I'm just kind of, you know when you put on your makeup and you're you know, softly blending and blushing and whatnot, um, I'm just gonna blend in that. Again, I'm right, right between the two colors. And as I'm blending, especially if you've got a big area that you're doing, dry off your brush in between. Just keep drying that brush off so that you're blending with a dry brush. If again, it looks like too much like of a line there, scooch that paint up. You can always add a little green to it if it looks too much like a painted line. And we still want that really bright green right across the top. Now, you could even use a yellow if you wanted to. Um, if you were painting a green and you wanted it to be real bright, just go in with a cad yellow, mix with the green, and you're gonna get this little lime green color. You don't need to have all the colors, really. So I've put that green on there, the light green, and then just softly blend it. These two colors are blending together much easier. They're very close in, in uh, color. When we went from the real dark to the middle, that's a bit of a jump. So it just it required a little more blending, a little work, but uh, it's really kind of fun to see these little areas come alive. So it's just um, put right on there. And like I said, sometimes if the paint's really wet and wet, you might not to even have to go blend it. You might like, the, the way it has a nice sharp edge and a nice highlight there. It's all what you like. I show you what I do. I'm not the boss of you or your painting. You can do whatever you want. Isn't that great? How many things can we do that we can do whatever we want? There's no right or wrong. So jump right in and, and just have fun with it. Rinsing my brush off now because I'm going to go in maybe, uh, not maybe, I am, into these little orangey bits. 
So I'm doing the same technique, different colors. A little burnt sienna, which is my red brown. And across the bottoms of these bits are going to be darker. Um, if the burnt sienna sometimes is not dark enough for me, I might add the teeniest, tiniest touch of black just to get more of a darker brown. Might need that, might not. You can always come back in and darken it up. And these little sections that are left, I'm going to do a little section of the orange here, here, and this big area. So it's almost like there's a little bump in the ground and this is behind, so it's almost like a little shadow back here. Now again, do it section at a time. I'm doing it for the, for the sake of time this morning, but you can certainly take your time and do one little section and blend it just the way you want as you get going and you're working on big paintings and you've got a big brush full of color, you can certainly jump ahead and do, you know, as many sections as you can. You can also use an extender in your paint, in your acrylic paint that will slow down your drying time. So you can use, you can use a little medium if that helps you. I paint pretty quickly, so I don't find I need to do that, but certainly take advantage of that if that's, if that's something you want to do. Terry Ann, everybody's popping in. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. I know it's early, but uh, we're having fun here painting. I'm going into just an orange here. I'm going to do the same sort of thing right above that line. The top of the uh, burnt sienna in this orange is not too far off, so I can even go a little closer. It's when it's a real harsh color, I leave a little buffer space. But I've got my shading on there. I've just added on some orange, and now when I dry off my brush, oh, Charlotte, oh, and Willow, hello, Willow. I know you guys are all such a talented bunch there. And um, dry it off, and just softly blend this bit now. Blend this orange into your brown. Now, I tell you I have the brush kind of half on, half on each color, and I just work it in. And if you need to, add more color if it needs to be blended a little more. And you can use any kind of brush stroke. I'm getting into a little bigger area here, so I've got a little more room to play around. And I can use some brush strokes to blend. I'm not losing that dark, though. You can see it's still there. It's still a shadow. And this is a little wider area, so I could certainly go and put now a little more dark here. What I want to do is not have a little boring patch of color. I want to put darks and lights. I do that lots of places, and I will even pat on some leaves here after. These little guys are pretty well just a little strip. So let's go in and take maybe like a yellow on the top. Just a lighter shade. You could do a lighter shade of orange. You could do a gold, a yellow. I'm just getting that tippy top a little lighter. From a distance, it looks fine. Like it doesn't really need much. But I do like to finesse it a little bit and then blend a little bit. I'm painting this kind of sideways, so I know I'm sort of hitting the area up above by mistake. And a way you can fix any little mistakes you're making if you're painting in acrylics and you paint where it doesn't belong, just take a clean brush, dip it in your water, and you can scoot away, if it's wet, you can scoot away any little mistake. If it's dried and it's where it shouldn't be, you can always use a little alcohol that removes the paint or just simply paint over it. So that's why acrylics are so great. You can fix any little bits that you might uh, make a mistake or not like something. So that's just a little clean brush with some water to scoot away where I kind of went too far with the, with the yellow. So I'm going to go and put a little bit of our yellow here. I'm going to add in a little more orange. I want this to be not, like I said, not a big block of orange, but let's bring this down, this little light area, and then up here we could get it a little more orange again. And I'm working quick, like I say, just so I can soften these colors together, but notice how I dry my brush off in between applying the color and, uh, you know, softening it. I could get a little of that burnt sienna back in here. Almost looks like sunset colors, right? Same way to paint a sunset. Get your yellow, dry off your brush, get into the little darker orange, blend, and keep going. Start light and go to dark for that case because you want that sun to be brighter. 
but you would finesse and blend the colors the same way. So, so now that gives us just something now for our birch trees to stand on. I'm going to paint the birch trees on there, but then I'm going to add a little bit more to these other areas. I'm going to dab on leaves. I'll take a small, like a, like a little filbert brush or something like the shape of a leaf and just dab on some colors. So let me take a quick look because I've been busy painting and I want to see if you guys have any uh, any questions or anything um, or comments. So um, we have time for that because it's we still have 20 minutes. So look at how far we've gone in, in just a few minutes. So that's what I want you to do. Don't get overwhelmed saying, oh, I'd love to paint, but geez, it's just, I don't have all the things and I don't have the time and, and I don't, you know, have a place. Make a little corner, that's all you need. And 15, 20 minutes, just sit down and you start. And you know what's gonna happen is you're gonna start, you're gonna enjoy it, and it's gonna make you wanna come back and do it again and do it again. And what happens when you do it again and do it again, you get better and better and better at it. So I think it's so cool. I want you guys to um, incorporate art. It just helps, it's just so much fun. Um, Oh yeah, and thank you guys for following along and let let your friends know if you are a crafter, you guys, you crafting people. I tell you on Craft Around the Clock, which is so fun. So give give it a, give it a whirl. If you're my uh, Tinker's Cart peeps, uh, Craft Around the Clock is a page I do lives like this on, and it is crafting all day long. Every forty five minutes, we've got a new person. So after me, stick around. There's someone else coming in to do an incredible project, um, and I am sort of I'm pretty crafty, but you guys. I just am so amazed. I can't wait to try some of the projects. So uh, I appreciate you guys that are crafty and might want to incorporate a little painting in your crafting. Um, that's what I do. I teach very beginners, absolute beginners, up to advanced. But I want to get people in uh, enjoying art and because it just does so much for me and I want to share that with you. Hey, Debbie, good morning. Um, I appreciate it. So I do have, um, of course, all the socials. I have... A Facebook page and YouTube where a lot of classes are. You want to go and take a look and, and, and work with me with some of the longer classes, please do. In the description, I have a phone number. You can text me and um, I'll let you know when I go on and do these little lives, as well as a link to all my socials. So if you like YouTube, I'm there. If you like Insta, you can watch me there. Um, I have two art memberships. So if you really get into painting and you want to learn more, I've got two uh, choices for you. So I just love painting and that's what I like to do. So here we are. Let's put our birch trees in just to get them started, and then we can dab some leaves and things around. I kind of look at my painting at this point. If colors have faded, if something's not as dark as I'd like, you can certainly go in and correct that. But birch trees are fun because they're pretty simple, and they're, and they're a great uh, subject for fall and winter paintings. I base them in in kind of a blue-gray and then I go and highlight them with a little white and to put the little black bits on. So for now, you could use, I'm going to use my flat on the chisel edge. You could use a, a liner brush. Good morning, Sandy. Oh, thanks for watching. I love it when people find me and, and watch for the first time. And I'll, I hope to see you again and again. Um, so any brush you want. My paint's been sitting out a few minutes. I'm thinning it down. The paint does get a little thicker. And when I'm doing um, something that's more detail, I like to thin my paint down. And... It, you find that if it's more like an ink consistency rather than the thick paint, it's going to flow easier for you, especially if you're doing little lines and branches and whatnot. So I'm just going to thin this paint down a good bit. And like I said, I want to make it kind of a blue-gray. I don't want to start bright white. If I started bright white, if I put bright white birch trees on there, how can I highlight them? So I want them to look rounded, so I need to start them darker. And then I can put just a quick little white highlight. Now, I could have painted them light white, and then shade it on one side, and then put a highlight later. But it's quicker, I think, just to get in and do a little bit of a blue-gray. I am not a big, I have a very colorful painting. I don't like using gray very much. So whenever I do, I mix a little blue in it. I'd rather have it more of a slate blue-gray than just black and white. It's kind of dull. So I've got a little bit of a blue-gray here. I'm going to do my paint, uh, paint my trees all in one stroke with my brush. I'm going to start a little heavier and get lighter. So let me see if I can do it upside down to show you. It might be a little wonky, but I'm going to have my tree start here. I'm going to press my brush, press it, press it, and I'm going to start lifting it so it gets thinner. That's a little bit uh, too thin at the top. Birch trees are, birch trees are almost the same width. I do like to start a tiny bit heavier. So can you see that stroke I'm taking? I'm just, I'm just bearing down on my brush a little bit. And then I'm sort of twisting it to get it thinner and then bringing it up. You could use a round brush for that or a liner. 
And if it's easier, do that. Same thing. You would just press down on your, your liner brush. Press, 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 and then start lifting so you get it a little thinner. So that's the stroke. You might want to practice it a little bit, but uh, it's pretty easy. So I'm going to just put in the base of the trees, like I said, with that blue-gray. I, and I do things in threes because that kind of is a nice design element. So I'm going to do three there. And maybe I'll just do two here. Just the basis of the tree. We're going to add, like I said, the white, a few branches, some tr some leaves. And I know you probably think they don't look anything like birch trees yet, but that's how we're going to start them. Just kind of a thicker at the bottom, slightly thinner at the top, straight up. Not straight. I always wiggle them a little because they're natural. You don't want them to be perfect, perfectly lined up. So while that dries, let's take and just dab some leaves. So I might dab some leaves that are actually the color of the orange, so you don't see them that much, but when it gets onto the darker bits and the lighter bits, you see them. So I'm really just placing, I'm just popping down like the leaves are down there on the ground. Back here, you're not gonna see them so much. These are more individual. These I'm gonna just kind of dab just to get a little bit of um, texture back here, really. And I'm gonna go through all the colors. I'm gonna use some gold. I might use some yellow and white. So it's just, just some dabbing for texture. Just wipe your brush off. You can go into your gold and do a little of that. You can go right up on top of this green section a little bit, so that, again, gives it texture. And I would even go right in front of my birch trees, which are a little wet. I would dry, let those dry a bit, but and back here, like I said, you don't want individual leaf, but you can just sort of make texture. Same back here. It's just going to be so far in the distance, but you might see a patch of the goldy color. It's not really individual leaves, but you might see a patch of it. And I will go into my yellow. I'll try that. Yellow's transparent. Sometimes it doesn't show, but put it in. It's a little dull. And then we're going to add some white to it, and those will, those will really pop. And I'm going to go a little lighter just to re-emphasize the light areas at the tippy tops of these little sections. And if you put it on, it looks a little harsh. Just Again, just soften like we did previously. You can still soften that. So watch now when you add a little white to a color that is a little transparent. So if you're painting acrylics, especially transparent. Paint the area white first. If you have a block of something, say I'm doing a night sky and I've painted it all blue and I want a moon in there, I'll paint it white with a few coats till I get it bright and then I'll put my yellow. Put your yellow right on that dark sky. It's never going to show. Um, but if you're doing something like this, little bits, but you want that yellow to pop a bit, take just a little bit of white and mix it. So if you mix a little white with your color, it's going to give it um, a little opaque uh, quality. And then you can go on and you can really see it a little more. Can you see these little leaves I'm putting on are really showing up a little more. So just a little white will help with that, those transparent colors. And up here, I might just add, again, just a little texture, maybe towards the tippy top where we were a little lighter. And you can even do some of that. I didn't, I didn't do it with the burnt umber, which is the color we used to shade, but you could also pop a few of those in. It's just whatever fall colors you have. You could add some little green down there. It doesn't nothing to say there wouldn't be a few green leaves or green spots. I'm just adding interest down here. And now on the green sections, I think I'll just go ahead and use that goldy color, yellow color rather. And I could get a little texture there with that. And I'm gonna put some little texture in the trees while I'm at it. This is just the yellow on top because it's transparent and it's on top of green. It's not gonna be too bright. It's just going to be a little texture. A little of the gold you could use. I just didn't want it to be the flat, flat color. Uh, granted, we had lights and darks, but a little bit of, you know, a little bit of other colors just sort of in there just adds interest. If you have lost your little lines in your water, which they're pretty much there, you could just thin your paint down again because it's a detailed section little detail. You could go ahead and put in a few more little white caps or reflections in there if they've sort of dried. And, and So there we are. We've got everything done in the landscape. Now we've got to deal with those trees. So let's uh, put a few branches. Put that highlight on there. Sometimes the rougher you paint them, the better. Here's a close-up. Can you see how I've just kind of dabbed on pretty rough brush strokes of white? So I'm going to do, and you can do that with any brush. You could do it with your round. You could do it with a flat, a filbert. Just something like the right size. So this is, this 
is about the size of my little trees. I'm going to take some white. I'm going to kind of almost take it just on the corner of my brush. Oops. Pat it down. That's way too much paint. But the paint is kind of on one side. And I'm going to say I want the highlight on the left side for some reason. Say the light source is coming from the left. I'm just going to go right down the tree. And so you still are going to see the gray on one side, but I've got a little white down the left-hand side of that tree. After each tree, you might have to just dab a tiny bit of white back on there. And, it, and I'm just going down the side and you can get thicker or thinner. It's not anything I'm thinking about too much. I think I've dragged in some brown there, but I'll just touch that up. So it's the left side I'm, I'm really aiming at. And I may put another coat of white on there. That dries and if it's too grayish still on that side, I will just add a little more. So I'm just using a filbert, like again, you could use your, your round brush for this. You use what's comfortable, what you find works. And it's going down the left side. I love it when it almost drags and it's kind of dry like that and it almost gives you bark texture, really. And again, so go back if it needs to be. If it's too gray and they don't look like birch trees, just go and really add some more white. I'd rather have you start <clears throat> add a little bit and not have it be enough and go back two or three times then go on with a big glob of white and then you have to try to scrape it off or paint over it. So start light, start, start easier, and then just keep going until you get it the way you want. And I'd like to leave a little gray on that side of the tree. That's the, a little bit of shadow. That's going to help it look a little rounded. And like I said, you could have certainly now, if you're more comfortable, gone with a round brush and just really placed it where you want. Some areas are a little brighter, some aren't. Very natural looking. And it needs a few branches still. So let's give it some branches. I might go dark gray for that. I don't want to go strictly straight black. It'll be just, it'll pop out too much. We want it to keep it a little bit subtle. And you, can you see how I'm adding a lot of water to my paint here now because I'm doing those thin little lines. And they're going to be just a stroke that start at the tree trunk and go out and up a little bit. And I'm going to do them a little darker so you can see them. Very light touch. I know people think, oh, I can't paint a fine line though. Paint really thin, start with super light, hardly touch the paintbrush to the surface. Hardly hold the brush. Don't be, you know, really tense on your brush and try and just let the paint be thin like ink. Let it flow and have a light, light touch and just in practice first. Just I just press down a little bit. And so like on the palette here, um, I would just start with a little, just like the, just like the trunks of the birch. Just start a little more pressure, pull it up, pull it up. You're going to be pulling this brush right up off the surface. So you're going to get a thin line. You can't help it if you're just removing it right from the surface. So, and having the paint thin is going to be a game changer if you've been trying to get thin lines and, and they've been all scraggly. And, and if that's the case, you're going to bear down more to try to fix it. And then you get a big thick line. So you want thin, thin lines and very light touch. And you can make a, your branches and you can make your branches and then little branches off there. You go as much or as little as you want. These birch trees can almost have hardly any, or you could do quite a few. It's just whatever you like. I'm putting a few more branches on this one so I can dab some leaves. These little birches still have a few leaves on their branches. And, and remember, they can cross over. So you've got this tree here, can, the branch can cross over. And I'm gonna put a few more up here. And I'm going to show you how you make these really turn into birch trees. And I keep an eye. If it looks like the white's faded and it's not dark enough, you can go and dab some more white on there. No problem at all. Now, same brush, take your solid black, and you don't have to thin it down. Just take the real nice black on, on your brush. And you know those little black bits that you find on the birch trees? I just kind of randomly put them on, random shapes. I start at the edge sometime and just, it's almost like a little triangle shape. Sometimes it's just a little dot, dot. You're just going to go and make those black bits that are what make a birch tree. And so I do start just on the edge a lot of times and pull in. And I just go along 
And the less you think about them, the more natural they're going to look. They're not very contrived. They're just on there. And that's turned it right into a birch tree, don't you think? Looks very much like a birch tree now. I'm going to just do those. Get that done. So what is everybody painting these days? Are you all about fall and Halloween? That's what I've been doing. Of course, now I think it's time to move into Christmas. And so I've got some cool projects lined up. But I just, Halloween's my favorite holiday. So I have to say, I really have been having fun with all kinds of little Halloween things that I've been painting. But I love to hear what you're working on. I love it if you share your work. Please just post. It doesn't have to be my painting. I just love to see what you're working on. If you ever have a question, you can send me a photo and direct message or on, post it, and I'll work with you and help you. If you have something going on in a painting and you don't know what, what it is, but something's not working for you, a couple tips you could. Well, first of all, maybe just leave it alone overnight and come back with fresh eyes the next day, and all of a sudden you see some little wonky thing you want to fix. Or take a photo of it, because more times than not, if I'm painting along with you guys, I see the mistakes in the video, not in my front of me. So taking a photo or holding it up in a mirror is key. You will see little bits uh, that you might not realize are off or, or perspective or something, and it jumps out at you then. So those are a couple little tips there for uh, finding out if there's anything that you don't like. So there we go. I'm going to add a few minute little leaves, but that's about all we need. So I'm going to try to see if you have any questions. Shout them out because we have, we have four minutes left. So, oh, Terry, thank you. I teach kind of in a very slow, easy, step-by-step -step method that goes baby step by baby step. And if you're a beginner, that's easier for you, I think. And if you're not, you could skip along and uh, just pick up some techniques and things. So thank you guys. And I want to see it. You try it. Terry Ann, try it. And um, I'd love to see it. So you could very well leave this that way. But I want to dab a few leaves. And this is just a little birch tree one. Sparse leaves. This one here, it's a little more detailed, of course. So it took a little more time. But it is one of the ones I painted uh, many times with my groups. So if you're painting trees, a quick little tip, because I do this every time. And I dab all my leaves on, and I dab all my leaves on. And then what do I get? I have like a lollipop. I have the trunk, and then this big blob of leaves. And I had fun doing it, and I'm dabbing away, and, it, and it's so much fun. But it looks like it's too heavy. It's going to just topple. But that's no worries, because you know what the best part is? Is going in after with blue and making your sky holes again. When I ever figured this out, it was like crazy how easy it is. So if you had the whole two solid tree, say, go right back in with your sky color with a little brush as if you're making leaves and then you can just get your sky right back just putting those sky holes in so we're going very light with leaves here but if you do a tree and you have you get like I do kind of going great crazy with all the cool leaves and it's too thick just go right back in with your blue and light blue and dab it away and uh, it's uh, perfect for making the tree a little lighter and those sky holes make it so just take your little brush, I'm using that little filbert, which is a rounded brush. I kind of like it for leaves. Start, I start with my darker color, you can do whatever you like. And I just dab on leaves. Again, don't think about it too much because it's, it's just nature and it's not uh, perfect and it's not contrived. You can make full on dabs, you can make use the side of the brush and make them thinner. And what I do from here is I just go lighter and lighter. So I'm going to make the, you know, make some with the dark. Um, it's not really that dark. It's a burnt sienna. It's just a red brown. If you don't have it, you could just take your burnt umber or whatever brown you have. Mix a little bit of red or orange with it. <clears throat> Dry off your brush. Go into your lighter color. So now I'm going to go into a little orange. Any of these colors are not showing up well because of the blue sky. Add a tiny touch of white to it which I do at the end anyway. I add them this way. They're a little duller. They blend, which is natural, you know, a little bit natural. Then at the end, I mix a little white and I give a few dots of the really high uh, bright colors. Go with your gold. It's like a yellow ochre. It's just a goldy color. And you see how you could go too far and make the whole thing just full of leaves because it's so fun? And just dab away. Go into my yellow. Again, the yellow is looking a little bit blah because it's got green or blue behind it. 
gives that yellow a little bit of a green tinge. But watch when I take my orange on my white, and I am rinsing my brush now. I want fresh color on there. Take a little tiny bit of white to my orange. I'll watch my time carefully now, because we have one minute. So questions or anything, throw them in the comments, and I will address them in a, in a little bit. But if you mix a little bit of white with your lighter color, see how they pop? See how much brighter that is? Same orange, just added a little white. And you might want to let these leaves underneath dry and then pop your light ones on, and they really will, will show. I'm going to say goodbye, and thank you for painting with me. Stay tuned right here, because you're going to have another cool craft come on. And I know this was a lot to squeeze in in 15 minutes, but we did it by the, by, um, you know, just in the nick of time, I guess. So happy painting, and please, if you want, jump in and paint. It's so much fun. Thank you guys for watching. I know it's early, but it's been fun. See you next time. See you next week.